I've been looking at some radio-related gadgets for this holiday season, and this one was one I just had to have. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. In this video, we're going to take a look at a really cool accessory for your Radio Shack. While it's not new, this package from Innovato at Innovato.com makes it a super easy install and setup. It's called the Innovato Quadro Ham Clock Bundle, and for less than $50 plus your existing monitor, you've got a really cool addition to your shack. As always, if you find this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. The Ham Clock program has been around for a while and is available from the Clear Sky Institute at clearskyinstitute.com. This program is usually based on a Raspberry Pi microcomputer. Raspberry Pi is packaged similarly to the Innovato Quadro with the ham pack bundle are priced upwards of $100. As I said earlier, the Innovato Quadro ham bundle is less than $50. The Quadro comes complete with a case with the ham clock as well as several other ham related software apps preloaded. If you're a Linux fan and enjoy linking computers to your radios, the Quadra is powerful enough to run ham apps such as WinLink and Vera HF, Vera FM, Grid Tracker, and others, and they come loaded on the Quadra. Now, I'm not that guy, so my interest is primarily the ham clock program. The good news for me is that the Quadra boots with the expectation that the initial user wants to configure and run ham clock. So, what is ham clock? It's basically a digital version of the very cool visual displays that show the Earth, where the gray line is, as well as space weather, satellite tracking, and moon phases. The commercial version of this concept is the Geochron Atlas, with a dongle-style 4K device that sells for about $500, plus an annual subscription fee for the ham-related content. Now, for me, the ham clock's features and image resolution are more than enough for my needs. Its access to data via various programming interfaces or APIs is really amazing. The Innovato website has a couple of options when ordering. You can get the Innovato Quadro alone if you have keyboards and cables and the like, but for just a couple of bucks more, the ham bundle includes a Bluetooth mini keyboard, USB cable to power the device, an HDMI cable to connect to a monitor or TV, and of course, the Quadra itself. I'll leave a link in the description below. By the way, it's not an affiliate link, and I purchased the device because, well, I thought it was just too cool. Let's start by looking at what you'll get. So the Innovata Quadro came in a U.S. Postal Service packing envelope, and it came with a couple of things. One was a box with the Quadro, and the other was a small box with the Bluetooth keyboard. That included a, a little card from Innovato that gave you some basic information along with the password for the default uh, entry into the Quadro. And then inside the box for the uh, keyboard was a little brief, quick little instruction guide for that. So the little Bluetooth keyboard that's part of the ham bundle is really pretty cool. It's got directional arrows here, a trackpad, variety of buttons, and then a full QWERTY keyboard. Uh, it's battery powered, and it uses a little BL5 type battery. Uh, and then here inside is the little Bluetooth dongle that you'll use to connect the keyboard to the Quadra itself. Turns on, it illuminates, and all in all, it looks like it'll be a pretty good uh, input device. It is small, and with fat fingers like I have, it may take me a little bit to get used to this, but uh, all in all, it's a pretty nice addition to my 
my kit and it didn't cost hardly anything when bundled with the Quadra. Now the other accessories that come with the Quadra include a stand which allows you to stand the Quadra on end to help uh, keep air around it to keep it from getting too hot. Uh, HDMI cable here that'll go from the Quadra to the uh, monitor of your choice and then a wired power supply and uh, I may have referred to that as a USB power supply earlier. You know, it's a 5 volt output, so you could use a, a USB power source for this, but notice it does have a barrel connector. So a 110 volt uh, wall wart with a small barrel connector to power your device. So let's look at the device itself. It's a little hard plastic case uh, that contains the computer. It's got some air vents on this side, some air vents on the bottom. Again, uh, when standing on end with that case, it'll help keep it cool. On this side, you've got a USB 3 style connector. And then on this side, you've got most of the other connectors. So this includes the power input, a USB connector here that you could use with that little Bluetooth dongle. Here is an Ethernet connector. And then here is a, a HDMI connector. That's a full size HDMI connector. And then this little plug here is for AV, which I suspect is headphones. So that's the device. There's not too much to it. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get all this connected and go through the initial setup tasks. So here's the Innovato screen as it comes up. And I've gone up here to the, the top corner and clicked up here and connected to my Wi Fi. You can see the Wi Fi is open right here and then I went in and changed my password and to do that I did that in a terminal window there's instructions on the Innovato website so I'm not going to go through that part with you next thing I'm going to do then is notice that I've got these apps so Firefox a couple of other apps a Pi apps folder with a number of apps and then just a number of things down here to include uh, establishing a terminal window. So that's kind of the version of the Windows opening box down there. And so that's where those things are going to occur. But I'm going to go into ham clock. So I'm going to go open ham clock. And so I've got to double click on that. And now it's come up. And it says, do you want to use a, the quadra as a dedicated full screen ham clock, ham clock on a TV or monitor? Yes, I do. That's the whole point. So I'm going to click yes. And I am using my little mini keyboard here. So it's got that uh, touchpad in the middle, plus arrows and the other full aspects of the keyboard. It says, this will illuminate the borders on the left and right and make it look like the one on the right. And yeah, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to click yes. After you click done, the ham clock will run automatically on boot. When you run for the first time, to enter your call sign. So I'm good. That's good. So it's rebooting, as you can see. Click anywhere to set up. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to backspace and enter my call sign up here at the top left. AA7JM. I go over here and enter my grid square. And this is not my grid, so I'm going to backspace here add my grid square, which is EM3. Three, three, WR. Now, when I move forward, uh, you can see that the correct latitude and longitude have already been established right there. So that's pretty cool. I'm not going to use the GPSD or geolocate, the IP geolocate. That's going to probably end up putting me down I'm in the Phoenix area. I'm going to probably be put down in Chandler because that's kind of where most of these applications put me with my internet provider. So I'm going to go to the next page. Not going to use a DX cluster. I'm not going to rig control. Use FL rig. I'm going to use the default um, server for time and I'm not going to connect to one of my uh, ADIF files. And then uh, my map center longitude is 99 west, and so I'll just leave that there for now. So I've gone through the setup, and so now I'll go into done. It's making my connections, finding my best time. Okay. 
and now it's come up to my screen. Hey, just a quick break to let you know that you can support the Gadget Talk channel by using Buy Me a Coffee. It's a crowdsourcing platform where viewers can make one-time donations or become members of the Gadget Talk community. Your support helps provide resources to purchase some of the items reviewed on the channel. I'll put a link in the description below this video. Now, back to our topic. What I find really cool about the ham clock display is how flexible the display elements are. You've got several choices for each of the elements. That helps you make the display truly your own, or you can set some display areas to rotate through the options available for each of them. Let's explore a little bit. Now, my screen does a number of really cool things for me, and I can make changes to these things, and I've made some changes already. So if I click over here, I can change the color of my text. I click over here, I can change the color of the background. Kind of like red, so I'll leave it there for now. This sometimes reads off, but it gives me UTC time, which is 1746 right now on Saturday, the 9th of December. In this DX box, it shows me my current local time and my grid square and so forth. I can make some changes here and I can have all the info, just a simple analog. I can put up a calendar, for example, if I want a calendar in this box instead. I'm going to use the All option. Back to OK. Here in this box, I can do the same thing. I can set the DX. I can set satellite as I have it in now. It's the uh, Spa International Space Station. Uh, so there are a number of choices I can put in this display box, too. Same up here. You click up here in the uh, upper area, and you can, you know, click your ADIF file, contest, the weather at the destination, five spots, POTUS spots, all this kind of stuff is available. And if you click more than one, it'll rotate about every minute or so from one thing to another. So we'll leave it at Planetary K for now. Same thing over here, we've got solar flux. And we've got the moon and x-ray and solar flux pecked. And so that's going to rotate. So it's in solar flux now. The next display should be the x-ray number. Up here, we can do the same thing. We can make changes. And we've got uh, the SDO, which is the sun. We could add solar wind, space weather, and so forth. Now, some of these I need to learn a little bit more about. So I'm going to leave this the way it is. Here we can put in DX spot frequencies in these various bands if you're searching for uh, where frequencies and bands are open. Otherwise, we can put in the space weather, our destination weather, or the weather where we are in this little box. So let's change it to weather where we are. Gives a call to the weather service, and it's 58 degrees, humidity, the wind direction. And it's been kind of a windy day here in Phoenix, and so we can have the weather up there instead, although the weather can also be put in the one on the far left side. So we'll just leave it there at weather for now. You can see here's the moon as it go, comes around. It's just a small quarter, and it matches the display up here. Now I have city selected in one of these, and so if I go over here and click, you can see that right up here in this area, the city where the cursor is appears. So I'm over Brussels in Belgium right now, or over here, I'm over Jacksonville, Florida. So that's kind of handy. This shows where the sun is right here. And this little circle right here is where I am. And then plus some of the, the spots that we see. So this spot right here is green. And that represents the spot there on 18. Now, I seem to have lost contact with my weather. And so it's all showing errors. I'm sure it's coming back. But let's get rid of the weather right now and go back to that DX spot display. Now our map can be changed as well. And so we'll click up here. And so you can, uh, I don't have any grids. I can put maidenhead grids and so forth. That's all pretty cool. Instead of train, I can put countries. Let's do that just to show you. And so now the geographical boundaries of the countries are displayed. 
instead of the terrain. You were chasing DX and looking at the spot information that you might find that helpful. I kind of like the display for the terrain. And then I like the Mercator projection, which is what's there, but we could do an azimuthal projection, uh, and that'll look like two orbs there or two disks. And so that gives us the, uh, an alignment through that azimuth instead of the Mercator. We'll go up here again, we'll do a tap, and we'll come down to uh, the, this one, the Malweed. And so you see it's a big arc now, or a big uh, oval instead of the projection with the Mercator. And so um, that's kind of cool. I like that one, but I'm going to go back to Mercator. And then you can see here I've got the night and city selected so that where in the world it's night, you're going to see darkness. And then that gives us that hoverability over those cities. So that's kind of cool. So that's a quick overview of setting up your ham clock for your Radio Shack. These display panels are really pretty cool and they have some very interesting information. Unfortunately, I'm not sure I understand all that information. And so I'm gonna do a little bit of study and maybe come back with a follow-on video to explain what these various displays mean. The basic descriptions are in the user manual that I'll link below. And I may end up digging around a little more to get a better understanding of all the really cool information that's available here with the ham clock program. This little tour just scratches the surface of the displays and their accompanying data. If you're like me, some of these options are going to require some additional study to understand what the displays are telling me. The user guide has some basic info on some of the more technical displays, but at least for me, I'm going to have to do some additional study to get the most from this very cool application. I'll also link to the ham clock user guide in the description. I've got a hand-me-down monitor that I've been using as the display monitor for my Yaesu FT710 HF rig. I find I often don't even turn it on, so now it's my ham clock. Since this video is coming out just before Christmas, you might want to reserve some of Grandma's Christmas cash for this cool addition to your shack. Join me over here to take a look at my most recent video. Thanks for watching and 73.